Faculty of Chemistry, Department of Basic Science and Humanities, Kolhapur Institute of Technology, College of Engineering and Autonomous Institute, Kolhapur. In today's lecture, we will discuss about the water treatment method that is ion exchange method in lesson 9 of unit 1 water technology. An ion exchange process that is a water treatment system is a specialized technology used in wastewater treatment to remove dissolved ions and contaminants from water. In particular, ion exchange process is generally used to remove dissolved impurities from water. Dissolved impurities means dissolved cationic impurities, dissolved anionic impurities and dissolved gases. Because that ion exchange process depends upon the exchange of ions which are charged one and therefore, specifically it is used to remove dissolved cationic and anionic impurities means dissolved salt impurities from wastewater. Actually that ion exchange process relies on ion exchange regions that attract undesirable contaminants into the wastewater and exchange them with less objectionable substances. But what is the requirement? Both the contaminant which has to be exchanged from wastewater and exchangeable substance which is present on ion exchange regime, both must be dissolved in water and both must have same type of electrical charge. As both ions has to exchange both must have same type of electrical charge it may be positive or negative. Now, if we look at the schematic of ion exchange process, ion exchange unit it contains different compartments first one is cation exchange column, second one is anion exchange column and last is degasifier which is generally used to remove dissolved gases from water that is as water enters into the degasifier which contains different coils working at temperature more than 100 degrees Celsius. That is whenever water comes in contact with these coils, the gases present they will evaporate and we are getting air water which is free from the dissolved gases. That is the role of degasifier here. But the main unit of the ion exchange process is nothing but cation exchange column and anion exchange column. Now, in cation exchange column and anion exchange column, Again, there are different compartments. Cation exchange column has one water inlet, wastewater inlet or hard water inlet. One resinous part is there, above which uh, there is an inlet for hard water, and then there is an outlet water collector is there. Likewise, for anion exchange column, one compartment for inlet water, then there is a resinous material compartment, and below which there is a presence of outlet water compartment. This water has to pass through degasifier for the removal of a dissolved gases. The main part of cation exchange column and anion exchange column is nothing but resinous material, which contains their exchangeable ions. Now, if we observe the resinous material, in cation exchange column there is a presence of cation exchange resin, and in anion exchange column there is a presence of anion exchange resin. Actually, resins are insoluble, cross-linked, long chain organic polymers with a microporous structure and the functional groups attached to the chain are responsible for the ion exchange properties. That means, if you look at the cation exchange regime which is generally denoted by RH plus, generally cation exchange regimes are nothing but copolymers of styrene and diamonyl benzene which upon sulfonation or carboxylation becomes capable to exchange their hydrogen ions with cations in water. If we observe the mechanism for the formation of cation exchange resin, that is styrene and diavinyl benzene as both have a unsaturation as a functional group, both undergo polymerization process, specifically addition polymerization and we are getting a, a copolymer of styrene and diavinyl benzene. If we do the sulfonation or carboxylation of that copolymer of styrene and diavinyl benzene, we are getting here cation exchange resin. Means Whatever H plus ions attached to the synthesized resin, these H plus ions are now exchangeable. Means what? If you pass impure water containing dissolved cations over the surface of this cation exchange resin, the undesirable cations from the waste water or impure water, these undesirable cations they will attach to resin, and H plus ions from the resin they will enter into water. 
generally that cation exchange region is represented by RH plus where R indicates the polymeric backbone and H plus is nothing but exchangeable cation present over the surface of that cation exchange region is metal. Likewise, the anion exchange column also it contains one anion exchange region which is able to exchange their OH minus ions with undesirable anions from the wastewater. That anion exchange region is again a copolymer of styrene and divinyl benzene or urea formaldehyde containing amino or quaternary ammonium or quaternary phosphonium groups which on treatment with dilute NaOH becomes capable to exchange their hydroxyl ions with the anions in the water. If we observe the mechanism, the styrene and divinyl benzene again it undergoes polymerization, we are getting copolymer of styrene and divinyl benzene which upon N methylation in presence of methyl iodide yields quaternary ammonium cation which is stabilized by means of iodide ion. This species upon reaction with sodium hydroxide, dilute sodium hydroxide that iodide ion get replaced by means of OH minus ions and we are getting here anion exchange region. Means if you pass here a wastewater containing undesirable anions, whenever that wastewater comes in contact with anion exchange region, the undesirable anions will attach to the region and OH minus ions from the surface of region they will enter into water. After the preparation of cation exchange region and anion exchange region, we have to make small granules of these regions here and then we have to add these regions granules into the cation exchange resinous compartment of cation exchange column and anion exchange resinous compartment of anion exchange column respectively. Now, if we look at the process, what are the reactions into the ion exchange process? Initially, we have to pass the hard water or soft water that uh, waste water over the cation exchange column. If that waste water contains undesirable dissolved cations, these cations exchanges with H plus ions of cation exchange region and H plus ions will enter into water here. Whereas, undesirable cations from the water, these cations will attach to the cation exchange region is material. Likewise, whatever water we are getting after passing through cation exchange column, this water by means of motor or pump, we have to lift up this water and this water we have to pass through anion exchange column. Now, this water is free from the cations as maximum cations they are exchanged with H plus ions of the cation exchange region and this water now contains dissolved anions. Whenever this water comes in contact with anion exchange region, the undesirable anions from the waste water, they exchange it with OH minus ions of the anion exchange region and OH minus ions of the anion exchange region will enter into water. And finally, this water we have to pass through the degasifier for the removal of gases. That is initially, we have to pass waste water from cation exchange region where cations get exchanged with H plus ions of cation exchange region and then we have to pass this uh, waste water over anion exchange region where anions of waste water get exchanged with OH minus ions of the anion exchange region. After the continuous use, after the continuous use of that ion exchange unit that is if we pass uh, waste water over cation exchange region number of cations from the waste water they will attach to resin and H plus ions of resin will enter into water. Similarly, if you pass water over the surface of anion exchange resin, the anions from the waste water will attach to resin and OH minus ions of the anion exchange resin will enter into water. That means, due to continuous use of that ion exchange unit, the ability of the exchange resin that is anion exchange region and cation exchange region, the ability to exchange ions that ability decreases as the number of H plus ions attached to the cation exchange region and number of OH minus ions attaches to the anion exchange region. As the number of ions decreases due to continuous exchange between ions, the ability of these two regions to exchange cations and anions decreases. This is called as exhaust condition and after exhaust condition, we can recover the resinous material and for the regeneration process, 
that is for the regeneration process we have to stop the supply of hard water or waste water and then we have to start the supply of a dilute HCl into the cation exchange column and we have to start the supply of dilute NaOH into the anion exchange column. That is dilute HCl when it comes in contact with this exhausted cation exchange region where undesirable cations from waste water are attached to with a resinous material. Regeneration of the cation exchange region takes place. That is during regeneration whenever HCl comes in contact with exhausted cation exchange region where undesirable cations from waste water just like calcium 2 plus magnesium 2 plus are present over the surface of a region. These undesirable cations they will react with HCl and we are getting a corresponding salt whereas H plus ions from the HCl this H plus ions will attach to the region and we are getting here regenerated region back here. Now this is a regenerated region where we can use it for further applications because it is now able to exchange H plus ions from its surface. Likewise, we have to pass dilute NaOH over the surface of anion exchange region which is exhausted. That means number of anions from the waste water are attached to the anion exchange region. But when it comes in contact with dilute NaOH, these undesirable anions they will react with NaOH and we are getting a corresponding salt which we can remove to sink here. Whereas OH minus ions will attach to the anion exchange region and we are getting a regenerated anion exchange region. Now this regenerated anion exchange region is now able to exchange their OH minus ions with undesirable anions from the wastewater. In this way we can regenerate ion exchange resinous material. That is the advantage of ion exchange unit as compared to reverse osmosis unit because in reverse osmosis process we have to add, we have to replace that reverse osmosis membrane after 2 years. But in the ion exchange process that ion exchange region we can regenerate number of times. Now if we look at the advantages of ion exchange process actually ion exchange unit one setup it is easy to operate and control. The ion exchange regions are regenerable as we have seen. It produces water of very low hardness about 2 ppm. So, it is used in high pressure boilers for softening of water. Also ion exchange unit is accompanied by certain disadvantages. The process that ion exchange process does not effectively remove suspended particles. As suspended particles are neutral they are not having either positive charge or negative charge. They are not exchangeable. That means whenever we are passing water over the surface of cation exchange region and anion exchange region and if suspended particles are there, these suspended particles can enter into the cavities of the resin, they can block the cavities of the resin and the flow of water over the surface of resin decreases here. Effective pretreatment needs to be carried out to make the water suitable for ion exchange process that is before feeding water for water purification into the ion exchange unit. We have to remove suspended particles, bacteriological particles, colloidal impurities from the uh, feed water here. Actually the ion exchange region uh, beds may accumulate organic matter which serves as a source of nutrient for continual growth of bacteria which leads to bacterial contamination of water. Means if some colloidal impurities are there into the feed water, these colloidal impurities when comes in contact with resinous material cation exchange resinous material or anion exchange resinous material. In the cavities of that resinous material that colloidal impurities get stuck just like peptides, amino acids, proteins likewise colloidal impurities and due to the accumulation of colloidal impurities there may be a continued growth of bacteria takes place and therefore it will lead to the bacterial contamination of water and therefore we have to do some pretreatment. We have to remove suspended impurities, colloidal impurities, bacterial impurities from the water before entering that water into the ion exchange unit. Generally ion exchange unit is specifically used to remove dissolved impurities from the water, dissolved cationic impurities, dissolved anionic impurities and dissolved gaseous impurities. Thank you.